Hello everyone, uh, this is Whitney Owens Park or Freestyle Fairy Kinds and today I will, bringing you, I will be bringing you some information about a very useful acronym that can help you check where you are with your stress and which will help you to avoid uh, letting the warning signs that you're getting overly stressed and try to dial down the heat as the title is of this uh of this lesson. So I'm talking at some point and I apologize, it might be a little distracting. So heat stands for hunger, emotional exhaustion, anger, and tiredness. So uh, when you are hungry, you might have heard the word hangry. And hangriness is something that's very common. Uh, it's just where you get too <laughs> you get too hungry. Thank you, Elisha. Can you Please try to go to your other room if you're going to talk. Are you eating mommy's hand? Shh. Eat the hand quietly. Thank you. So uh, when you're hungry, you might be more prone to irritability and frustration. Um, I know I do this a lot where I will get so busy with taking care of my son that I just forget to eat. And then I let it get too, too long and... For me, it's I get a little hangry, but also I usually will get a headache or nauseous. So you want to avoid letting yourself get hungry because it might have a variety of impacts upon you. So uh, when you're hungry, try to make sure you think about um, what are the kinds of foods that actually will give you a, a good boost of, of energy and help you to be in a positive mood. But if there are foods that you know are going to like lower your energy for me sometimes when I when I eat like a hamburger or something really really greasy that will actually make me more tired so just to know what foods will actually help you versus what foods will will hinder you and to always have a snack on you and uh, excuse me <laughs> to plan ahead so that you're ready for that hungriness to hit so you know I always have a boiled eggs in my fridge or cheese or whatever it is um, that I can just grab and get that instant boost of protein to help me uh, to keep going. The next one, emotional exhaustion. And this is really important because we don't want to become emotionally exhausted because we need to relate to our kids emotionally. And we need to relate to our partners and to the other people in a healthy way. And to maintain good relationships. So when we're letting ourselves get drained or if we're being around people who drain us emotionally or we're in situations that can affect us negatively, it's going to be more likely that we're just going to get to the point of we're emotionally exhausted and we start acting out of that and getting more angry or irritable. Here he comes. Um, <laughs> so you want to question are these people really good for me should I be spending time with them and if not if that's how if you say no that I should actually probably not spend as much time with them then make some boundaries in your life and set some limitations for yourself so that you don't have to um, be affected negatively you want to take your coat off yeah <clears throat> So, uh, also try to be prepared with mantras or things that you can tell yourself if you are getting into a negative, uh, cycle in your brain and you're, you're saying negative things about yourself. One of the ones I usually used to say would be, you know, people don't really like me. And so I would have to counter that with, I am worth getting to know and, uh, I'm a good friend or things like that. So you have little mantras that you can say back to the negative thought so that every single time that comes into your brain, you're countering with the positive. And then, you know, what activities can I do for myself that will give me the feelings of well-being that I need? So whether that's doing yoga or uh, doing a craft or cooking, those are things that I like to do. But there's, you know, maybe if you're a musician, you like to get on your guitar or sing a song if you're a, a writer to journal about your emotions or to to be to do some creative writing that helps you to channel and to start to understand what's going on with your emotions <clears throat> like I said in my other video we don't want to lose 
uh, presence with our own self and with our own gifts and abilities because when we do that we start to lose our feeling of selfhood and we need to mean we need to maintain that so that we can be good examples for our kids uh, for the next uh, letter a for anger <clears throat> um, when you are getting angry uh, there are usually some physical signs that will occur so you might become uh, lightheaded your body temperature might raise you might start stomping around or slamming doors or you might start <laughs> gussing whatever it is where you know you know you'll you need to start paying attention oh I'm, I'm starting to do this thing that is a uh, part of my warning sign that I'm getting really angry right now and then when you are getting that way are you feeling it's more difficult to deal with your children in an, uh, in a positive way? And obviously, most likely, that's going to be the case. If we're, we're angry, we're going to be distracted from being able to care appropriately with our children. So how can I make uh, appropriate... Uh, how can I approach my anger in a way that I can handle it and then come back to the parenting situation so whether that is you you do the more traditional i count down from 20 or you you know you do some deep breathing techniques you the walk out of the melon. room um that is a watermelon you maybe need to call a friend and to let them help coach you through it you know, there's crisis helplines if, if you're really in a bad state. Uh, that would be probably more for emotional. But, you know, anger can be a very strong emotion that we can't really con uh, contemplate sometimes how to get ourselves out of it. <clears throat> and the last one of tiredness. So, uh, most people are going to be more irritable, more uh, impatient, and more easy to to get frustrated with their kids when they're tired and unfortunately when you're a parent you're most likely not getting your seven to eight hours and so <clears throat> you need to try to prioritize sleeping as much as possible and if if that if that means you're napping instead of doing something else while your kid is napping or uh you change the routine so that you're putting your baby down um, at a at earlier, whatever it is, so that you know that you can adjust and you can start getting that uh, no, longer periods no, of time no, no. to sleep. And then um, if you are <laughs> getting tired because of things that you're eating, and but it's not a, like but you've slept enough, you know, maybe you need to cut that thing out of your diet or uh, save it for right before bed <laughs> to help you go to sleep. Or if you, because I actually know a sugar will make me crash. So sometimes I will eat a dessert right before bed and go brush my teeth and that will help me go to sleep. I know it's not very good for my weight, but I know that about myself. So maybe you know something like that about yourself. And so I don't like if... I won't eat, like, ice cream in the middle of the day because I know it's going to make me pass out. <clears throat> uh, and then if you're getting tired during certain times of the day, maybe to plan to uh, to change your activities during that time so that you can adjust what you're doing during that time so that you're not uh, going to increase the frustration that you're feeling. Maybe that's when you put your kid down for a nap and you go into and take a nap, too. Um, sleep training, uh, my sleep training video can help you if you're really struggling with getting enough sleep at night because your infant or toddler is not willing to uh, sleep without you or just doesn't want to, um, go, on, go down on their, um, doesn't want to stay down. So try, uh, to take a look at the sleep training video if the problem with your sleep and your sleeping schedule has a lot to do with your child. Um. As far as other ways to help you dial down the heat, uh, 
you can join a support group or become part of a church or temple or a mosque somewhere where people who share your same spiritual beliefs uh, will be able to support you and pray for you and um, potentially be the people who help watch your kid if you need to take a break. Um, when you are trying to get more sleep, it's a really good idea to turn off the electronic devices and put them away because that light is going to disturb your sleep. Darkening your room, uh, <clears throat> whether it's with dark out um, curtains or with uh, towels, can be very good at, at keeping that. Um, it actually helps with keeping the heat in and um, keeping the light out. Uh, getting more physical activity. I know that it sounds a little bit op opposite, but when you're getting more physical activity every day, you're actually increasing the endorphins, which is helping to um, boost your endo endocannabinoid um, receptors, and that's going to just help you to feel better and to boost your energy, your your uh, your mood and so that might help you if you are tired or if you're ain't you're prone to getting frustrated that will help to ba balance those things out um and again uh i think i've actually already mentioned most of the things on this list but the the biggest thing about being a parent i feel oh okay thank you buddy um you know, we can't get everything done in the day. We might have really complicated schedules that we are trying to manage all of the things and uh, we might uh, not be able to accomplish that. So make a list of what is your priority and what you want to get done and then leave the, the things that aren't um, critical for the next day. Or for a few days from now. And just, uh, I, I was doing some research the other day to help me with this. And uh, one of the things I learned was, don't try to schedule more than six things in your day that you want to get done. Because it's it's really only realistic that you're going to be able to get those six things done. And then you don't want to set your priorities so high that you become frustrated with yourself. And you become guilty setting um, that you didn't get everything done in the day. <clears throat> and... Um, Children just come with loads and loads of surprises, and we can't predict for all of the things that are going to come up with kids. So not overloading your schedule can be really important to feeling successful as a parent and not allowing yourself or not feeding into the guilt of not doing enough. And the last thing with that is, you know, quality time with your kid is more important than quantity. And I wanted to mention that last, yesterday, I sort of uh, skipped over it. But it has been proven that kids, uh, as far as if they're, the quality of their time with their parents is more helpful to creating success and confidence and helping them, them to be well adjusted behaviorally and, and uh, emotionally. So... Whether you are a working parent or you're a stay-at-home parent, as far as your parenting, as long as you're doing the e e parenting, as long as you are relating to your child and listening to them and loving on them, even if you don't have as much time to give, <clears throat> just let yourself know I'm doing my very best and I'm loving my kid the way that I am able and just love yourself for doing what you are, what you're doing. And let yourself feel good about your parenting. So, again, if anybody wants to know about what my business is, to uh, how I'm earning a side income, and uh, how you might be uh, able to take a natural supplement, um, mommy doesn't know where the pennies are. If you would like to take a natural supplement that will help boost your immunity, I know here in uh, Richmond right now, we have school off on Tuesday after Martin Luther King Jr. Day because, I'm sorry he's talking, uh, because so many of the kids and the staff and employees are down with flu. And uh, these products that I, I can share with you, they can boost the immunity 437%. And I am doing well right now. My son is doing well right now. And I am sure that is to do with the fact that we are uh, consuming the, the products that I want to tell you about. So uh, I hope I piqued your interest because I'm looking forward to talking to you all and telling you more about it. 
Besitos, lots of love and peace, and I hope you have beautiful Saturdays. Ciao.